So, we talked about PN junction diode and its application as a rectifier. There are some special purpose PN junctions like LED or photo detectors or the solar panel. So, I will be talking about uh, these, but before that let me do some numerical problems to give more familiarity with this uh, semiconductors and PN junctions. So, today we will do some numericals. The first one is that if you have a semiconductor and allow light to fall monochromatic light. then uh, how much of it is absorbed and how much is it is transmitted. So, the problem says that a monochromatic light is made to fall on a semiconductor and it is found that if lambda is less than 817 nanometers, so if wavelength is less than 817 nanometers, the semiconductor is opaque. semiconductor is opaque, but if lambda is more than this, this becomes transparent. So, if lambda is more than 870 nanometers, then it becomes transparent. That means, the absorption is very small. And the question is, what is the band gap? Right? So, you have a semiconductor and you uh, allow this light to fall on this semiconductor, it is a monochromatic light, and you change your light source and uh, work with different wavelengths. And you find that if wavelength is less than 870 nanometers, then there is lot of absorption. It is opaque, the light is not coming out. But when uh, lambda is more than 870 nanometers, then lot of light is coming out, the absorption is uh, very small and it looks like as if it is transparent and then what is the band gap. So, what is the relation of this absorption and the band gap? you have the semiconductor. So, you have a valence band, you have conduction band and then there is a band gap E g. So, if light falls on this, light photons has certain uh, energy and you can calculate what is the energy of the photon corresponding to this particular wavelength. So, if you calculate that energy of the photon, of 870 nanometer light, that energy you can calculate, it is h c over lambda and this is Planck's constant and this is the uh, speed of light, you can multiply them and that turns out to be almost 1240 EV nm and this lambda is 870 nm. So, you can work out how much is this uh, uh, energy. So, 1240 divided by 870. So, let me calculate this is 1 to 4 and divided by 87. So, divided by 87 and this is 1.42 almost 1.42 E V. So, that means 
if lambda is less than this that means the energy is more than 1.42 so if energy is more than 1.42 then uh, it gets absorbed it, it is opaque light doesn't come out so absorb means what and how can it absorb it can absorb if the band gap is 1.42 then this uh, photon 1.42 ev can get absorbed and can take an electron ah, this is valence band and this is collection it can take an electron from this valence band to this conduction band right and if the wavelength is still smaller the photon energy is larger than 1.42 eV then also this photon can get absorbed and this electron can go here and some thermal energy some energy will be dissipated in thermal energy so this process is possible but if lambda is uh, more than 870 nanometers the photon energy will be less than 1.42 eV so if the band gap is 1.42 eV and the photon energy is less than 1.42 eV that photon cannot take this electron on to this conduction band and therefore this photon will not be absorbed and will be transmitted through and this will be transparent so this is one way of getting an estimated band gap that you send light on this uh, semiconductor and see at what wavelength it becomes opaque to trans to transparent or transparent to opaque depending on whether you are increasing lambda or decreasing lambda so that gives this so our answer will be that band gap is 1.42 eb okay so let's go to the second question now this question says that for silicon the intrinsic carrier concentration is ni equal to 10 power 10 per centimeter cube so in silicon this ne which is equal to nh when it is intrinsic so that is equal to 10 to the power 10 per centimeter cube a p type semiconductor is made by doping impurity with concentration 10 power 17 per centimeter cube so in this uh, silicon which is intrinsic and then you dope some impurity and that impurity concentration is given it is 10 power 17 10 power 17 per centimeter cube okay p type this is p type uh, a p type semiconductor is made uh, by this uh, dopant and with the dopant concentration given this and the question is what will be the electron concentration so this is p type or acceptor impurity which we are doping and the question is what is the electron concentration so you remember when uh, we dope a certain impurity then uh, the other impurity the concentration goes down because of increased whole electron recombinations and the product of the concentrations of those two uh, two types of uh, charge carriers that remains same so if i am uh, doping a p type impurity then uh, definitely this uh, nh 
hole concentration is increased. And how much it becomes? It becomes almost the same as the dopant concentration because remember each, each impurity, each impurity atom that you are bringing in creates an impurity level. If you have valence band and if you have conduction band and you dope this p type impurity to make this p type then the new energy levels are created near this valence band. These are the impurity levels. Because uh, that uh, in the that silicon crystal it comes with uh, uh, one less outer electron and therefore, you have a hole it bonds with uh, three of them and that fourth one is already broken. Okay? And then uh, electrons can jump from here to these impurity levels and holes are created here. This becomes ionized right? that uh, becomes negative ion there and then uh, you have holes here. So, you have large number of holes here like that and since each, uh, each impurity atom is creating one such level here, the number of levels here or number of quantum states here is uh, same as the number of uh, these uh, dopant per centimeter cube and remember when I say quantum state spin up and spin down, so it will be double of this. Those many quantum states will be created here. But then this uh, ionization is very quick because this, this difference is small, this difference is only few tens of a milli electron volt and k t itself k times t itself is at room temperature 26 MeV. So, quite uh, often the electrons will fill that gap and the holes will be created here. So, almost, almost the hole concentration will be same as the concentration of this uh, dopant impurity here. So, I can take this, this NH to be 10 power 17 per centimeter cube and then Ne times NH that is independent of uh, doping and that is n i square intrinsic concentration square this is n i this thing is n i and therefore, this n e is equal to n i square divided by n h and n i square is this 10 to the power 10 into 10 to the power 10 that is 10 to the power 20 centimeter power minus 6 here and n h is 10 power 17 and then centimeter minus 1 which is just 1000 per centimeter cube. So, these will be the number of electrons which are here. When there was no doping that number was also 10 power 10, but then because of this doping this number has gone down to just 1000 whereas, this number has gone up to 10 power 17. Okay, the third question. Now, the next question says that you have a silicon which is doped with phosphorus. Okay. So, silicon doped with phosphorus and the data given are N d. What is N d? 
10 power 17 per centimeter cube. This is number of donor ions per centimeter cube ND concentration of donor ions. Then uh, the Fermi level is 146 milli electron volts below E C. What is E C? The lowest energy in the conduction band that we write as E C and the highest energy in the valence band that we write E V. So, it says that it is a silicon. So, you know how much this is. This is around 1.12 E V and the Fermi energy is 146 MeV below E C. So, 146 will be let us say somewhere here. This is 0 0.146, 146, 146 EV. This is firm energy. And then the another data is given that uh, ED, the donor impurity level, impurity level, E impurity you can call it, this is 45 MeV below this 45 small m E V below E C. So, the impurity level is formed somewhere here. This is 0 0.146 E V and then the impurity levels are formed somewhere here. So, okay, a lot of space problem. So, this is E C and then this is E i impurity level and this separation is 45 MeV, so 0 0.045 EV. So, these are the data given. I hope you remember for intrinsic semiconductor the Fermi level is in midway between these two E c and E v midway between, but if you dope this donor impurity like phosphorus. Uh, to make it n type the in this Fermi energy goes up. So, it is not at half it, it has gone up and then when you are uh, putting these impurities that impurity levels are created and they are few tens of uh, MeVs I had been talking about. So, it is this thing here the electrons jump from here to here because of uh, thermal energies and that is how you get electrons in the conduction band N E increases N H decreases. So, this is the data which is available. What is asked? What percentage of donor ions are not ionized? What percentage of donor ions are not ionized? So, you remember the mechanism if I have a, a donor impurity here it comes with 5 outer electrons four are bonded and one is still here which is to start with which is bound to this uh, donor atom. So, it is a neutral atom it had five electrons there are five electrons and therefore, it is a neutral atom, but then this electron if it goes to the conduction band if this electron goes to the conduction band then what is left here is a positive ion and you say that this donor atom has been ionized that means the electron has gone into the conduction band. So, the impurity level energies are here, here these are the impurity level energies. So, once the electron goes 
from this impurity level to the conduction band your donor atom is ionized and if it is not if it is still bound here if it is still bound here then uh, you say that it is not ionized so the question is what percentage of the donor ions which are substituted in this uh, lattice crystal are not ionized okay so total number of donor ions per centimeter cube is given here out of these how many are ionized and how many are not ionized right okay so what we will do we will calculate the probability of a quantum state being filled here these impurity levels have create are created here so you have created new quantum states and there are electrons to start with but then these electrons are going to conduction band and there is a probability of that so what is the probability that a quantum state here is filled by the electron right so that probability we can calculate and for that this uh, ef is is needed so probability that a quantum state at energy ei is occupied by an electron so this probability will be given by that uh, fermi function f of e which is 1 divided by 1 plus e power e minus ef and over kt and since i am looking for probability that a quantum state at energy ei is occupied so this e here is nothing but this ei and that one can calculate so this is 1 over 1 plus e ei minus ef so this is ei and this is ef so what is ei minus ef ei minus ef will be ei minus ef will be this 0 0.146 ev and then minus this 0 0.045 ev and that will be how much this much ev 0 0.101 EV or 101 milli electron volts. So, this is uh, 0 0.101 and then that divided by k times t. So, taking room temperature 300 k, k times t is 0 0.026 EV. So, let us work out how much is this 0 0.101. So, e to the power, let us work out this much 1 divided by 1 plus 48.6. So, that value is 48.6. So, that is 1 divided by 49.6, almost 0 0.02. But still, let me do that 1 divided by 49. 0.6 equal to yes 0 0.0201 etc so almost 0 0.02 so this is the probability this is the probability of one quantum state being filled here but how many quantum states are there the number of quantum states are 2 into 10 to the power 17 right 2 to 2 into 10 to the power 17 because of that spin up and spin down you have these many donor ions okay but then the electron 
with spin up is a different quantum state, electron with spin down is a different quantum state. So, total number of quantum states is 2 into 10 power 17 per centimeter cube and then you have this uh, probability of each quantum state being filled. So, multiply that how many quantum states are occupied. So, number of quantum states occupied is 2 into 10 power 17 and then into 0 0.02 or you can express it this way, this multiplied by 0 0.04 and that means 5, 4 percent, 4 percent of the total donor atoms. So, those many electrons are still here in the impurity level and if the electron is here that means the donor atom is not ionized, that electron is still here. So, the uh, fraction of these donor atoms which are not ionized that is 4 percent only 96 percent have already ionized that is this question. Now, let me do one more question and that is on p n junction. It says that a p n junction is formed by doping impurities with n a equal to n d. So, you make a p n junction. by doping impurities and number of acceptor impurity per centimeter cube is same as the number of donor impurity. So, if you denote your p n junction like this here is the junction then uh, from one side you have acceptor and other si side you have donor and uh, since n a is equal to n d your depletion region will be of equal width on the two sides. So, if this is p side and this is n side, this part is same as this part because n a is equal to n d. The depletion layer width is 1.4 micrometers. Okay. So, the depletion layer width is given 1.4 micrometers. So, this whole length is 1.4 micrometers that is given. The potential difference between the n side and the p side which is the potential barrier. So, that potential barrier is 0 0.6 volts. Okay. You know when the junction is formed, these electrons will diffuse to this side, they will create negative charges here and this will create positive charges here. So, you will have charge density in the depletion layer, no charge carriers, but charge density and then you have uh, electric field and you have potential difference and then uh, the potential of this n side is uh, raised as compared to potential of this uh, p side and that barrier is 0 0.6 eV. And the question is what is the electric field at the junction? What is the electric field? at x equal to 0 at the junction. Okay. So, if you remember our electric field, this electric field will be in this direction, this is the direction of electric field positive side to negative side and therefore, it will be negative in the usual diagram. So, if E is here, x is here, then uh, you have electric field somewhere here and then when depletion layer ends, the electric field becomes 0. The electric field is 0 here and it is linear and it is linear. Same story on the other side. 
the electric field is still in the same direction, so it is negative. And here the electric field is 0 beyond the depletion layer. So, here it is all 0 and this is also linear. And this is let us say E naught. And we need this E naught or you can call it minus E naught if you so wish. All right. So, you can write this electric field and remember this let me call this x 1. So, what is what equation can I write for the electric field here? This I can write as E equal to this is minus E naught and then plus E naught over x 1 times x. Just check the linear equation and then at x equal to 0 e is equal to minus e naught. So, e is equal to minus e naught at x equal to 0 and at x equal to x 1 this will be 1 x over x 1 and so minus e naught plus e naught will be 0 will be 0 and it is linear. So, this is the equation. Now, you can integrate to get this v, v will be minus e naught x and plus e naught over 2 times x 1 here and x square here and plus some constant. And you can take v to be 0 at x equal to 0, this is our choice and that will make c equal to 0. So, v is equal to minus e naught x plus e naught x square over 2 x 1. And what happens here at x equal to x 1 and beyond? Okay, electric field is 0, so the potential will be constant. So, v at x equal to x 1. So, this x is equal to x 1. So, you have e naught x 1 by 2 and here minus e naught x 1. So, it is minus e naught x 1 by 2. That is the potential. Right, but if the total potential barrier is 0.6 electron volt from here to here it is 0.6 electron volt and it is symmetric here. So, if you have 0 potential here and this side it is something the same will be other side and this difference this difference from 0 x equal to 0 to x equal to x 1 should be 0.3 volts. So, this should be equal to this E naught x 1 by 2 this potential difference from junction to the end of the barrier that should be 0 0.3 volts and from here you can get what is E naught 2 into 0 0.3 volts okay? and then divided by x 1 and how much is x 1? x 1 is 0 0.7 micrometers. So, that is the uh, electric field you can write in terms of volt per meter this is 10 power 6 here 0.6 here 0.6 over 0.7 that will be 60 by 7 that is 8.6 something like this 0.86 in fact 0.86 okay, let, let me write 0 0.86 0 0.86 that is this and then into 10 to the power 6 volts per meter or 0 0.86 mega volts per meter. That is the maximum magnitude of electric field which exists at the junction and then as you go on this side or you go on this side it linearly decreases to 0. All right, So, we will stop here and next time we will do uh, some special p-n junction diodes.